Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a full deep dive review application shots and just all the bits and bobs about the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Foundation. I've had this for almost three weeks or a little bit over three weeks. I ordered it as soon as it launched online and I could get it shipped. I've worn it exclusively. This has been like the foundation that I have by choice worn every single day so that I could really see how it performs in all different types of scenarios and have the best um, review for you as possible. And then I'm also gonna throw in a little bit about the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Elevated Glow like highlighter illuminator liquid. So. I know this is super exciting because it is our makeup queen, Lisa Eldridge's product, and I'm excited to share my thoughts and opinions on it with you. So um, I'm going to start off with the application shots, and then from there, we'll move into the review portion of the foundation. On one side of my face, I'm going to show you the foundation blended out with a sponge. So we'll do sponge on this side, and then on this side, I'll do... Uh, blend it out with a brush for my sponge. I'm just going to use a damp beauty blender and then for the brush I'm going to use a Sephora Pro 93. This is actually a brush blush brush But I've really been enjoying this for foundation I think it gives such a nice finish and uh, I like it for concealer even as well So on the skin I don't have any type of priming product. All I have is my cleanse skin with some sunscreen and a little bit of moisturizer so I'm just going to show you the way the foundation looks on, you know, unprimed skin, but we have the skincare going on, which is just as important. So make sure your skin is prepped and ready to go with skincare products, and we'll do one side each. So I'm gonna start off with uh, one pump, and you can see you do get just a really small amount, um, which can actually be used for the entire face, but I'm going to show you one pump on each side of the face because that really gives you a good amount of coverage. So I just dot it all over the face. I should probably zoom you in just a bit. So here's the foundation on one side. I'm going to show you how quick and easy it blends out. So this foundation is really nice for beginners and you can see um, it just instantaneously evens everything out for me. And this brush gives you a really nice uh, quick blend and then there you go um, and it looks really nice and lightweight so there's that one side I'll do another pump and we will do the sponge application so same thing just gonna dot this all over and then I'll take my sponge this one is damp and just stipple it in with the sponge. Now, uh, sponge takes a little bit more time, but being completely honest, I think this is gonna come down to personal preference because I don't find much of a difference in the finish or the way the foundation looks once it's been applied. So application tool is totally gonna be what you end up preferring. Either way, it's always a really nice, quick application. I can't tell a difference between the two. Um, I think that the sponge side sometimes turns out a little bit more dewy. Just a barely there observation that I make when I'm, you know, using the foundation. I will say though, I do tend to prefer the brush just because it performs just as well and I find that I get an even quicker application. So it's really not going to matter. It performs really well with any application um, as well as fingers so I'll even show you we'll take a tiny bit more just like half a pump on the back of the hand and we'll do a finger application where we want to build up the coverage and I'll just stipple it right on top of the hyperpigmentation where I want some you know extra coverage on my hyperpigmentation and you can see it just blends in invisibly. It's very beautiful. Really looks like skin, in my opinion. You can see it does such a good job of covering up my hyperpigmentation, but because I kind of go a little bit softer where I have freckles and moles, those are still able to peek out from behind the foundation. 
So this is what I really wanted to show you. Uh, this is the foundation in direct sunlight. I mentioned this on my Instagram stories. It is absolutely exquisite in direct light. Um, I'm in a gigantic sunspot and as you can see, this foundation, the most incredible thing about it is it does not emphasize texture. I've got, you can see, I've got a little bit of um, clogged pores, but it's not making them look worse. It makes them look exactly the same, if not better, because it slightly blurs out my texture. But I'm genuinely just so impressed with the way that this foundation looks in the sunlight. And this one is just phenomenal at not making it look any more aggressive, but also still giving you this like soft blurred effect absolutely beautiful and when you're in the sunlight you don't have to feel insecure like it's bringing everything to light um, it just looks so phenomenally amazing in person uh, just really really beautiful a weirdly specific thing about the foundation from my personal experience is i do not like it under my eyes i'm trying to move my mirror um, i don't like it under my eyes because i have a very deep fold under both of my eyes. Um, because this foundation has a little bit more of a powdery finish to it and the way it sets on the skin is a little bit more powdery, it looks gorgeous on the planes of the face, but um, it tends to settle in that fold under my eyes and that's why myself personally, I tend to prefer to use like a dewier foundation under my eyes or a dewier sticky concealer that stays put and doesn't settle. So if you do put this under your eyes, it provides you with amazing coverage. It's just for myself throughout the day, it starts migrating a lot under the folds of my eyes, but it doesn't migrate around the planes of my face and it doesn't cling to dry patches. So it's just a personal issue with me and the folds under my eyes. So under my eyes, I'm just gonna use my um, NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This is my uh, favorite under eye concealer just to add a little bit of brightness and help disguise some of those uh, shadowy bits that I have. And I'm just going to blend out my concealer with this um, IT Cosmetics concealer brush. And then we'll put a little bit of the Elevated Glow liquid so you can see the base products all together. Foundation and concealer blended out, you can see I just think it looks so good. It gives you a really nice amount of coverage. It doesn't look full glam though. Like it still looks really nice and natural, especially in person and in the sunlight. I cannot emphasize that enough. This foundation also pairs really well with every concealer I've tried it with. Um, it's just, it's good. It's versatile. You can mix and match um, with your favorite concealer or you could use this under the eyes if you really want to boost up the coverage without having to use concealer. So it is a customizable coverage foundation in that sense. Now I'm also going to be showing you the Lisa Eldridge um, Elevated Glow product. Mine's in Cosmic Rose. What I do is take it on the back of my hand, just like a little dollop of this. And then I like to massage it in my hands just to get the pigments all mixed up together. And then I like to apply it with a sponge. So I'm going to use my beauty blender and prepare to be amazed because this gives you such a pretty glisten. It's not even like a glow. It's just like the most perfect amount of glisten. Um, you can use a brush to apply this as well, but I prefer a sponge. And I've been wearing this a lot and I've tried it with even other foundations. I never have issues with this liquid highlighter lifting up whatever I have underneath it. I never have to do patchwork and you can really use as much as you want and it doesn't go overboard. If I want to be a little bit more precise, I'll apply it with my finger first and then just blend it in with the sponge. You don't need powder. You can use powder if you wish to increase the longevity, but even without powder, it still lasts because you can see I do have the highlight um, on the high points of my face, but on the planes of my face, it's already set down on its own to a powder finish. So you can go straight away in with all of your powder base products and the foundation will not cling or grip to the powder products, making them look patchy. You get a really nice airbrush finish every time. I'll just show you for example, we'll do a little bit of bronzer. So I'll use my um, Benefit Hula. And we'll just bronze up a little bit. 
and you can see it's not clinging anywhere. It's going on so beautifully and just really nice and even. Come on, you don't even have to use powder and typically with like certain foundations, you know, you need to do a little bit of setting work just so that everything goes on a little bit more smooth. No issues in terms of what you decide to put on top and the way that the products apply. So I'm just going to uh, finish off the rest of my face. And then I figured I would also show you um, what it looks like if you were to put a little bit of highlight on top of the elevated glow. It's just going to make it have a little bit more punch, um, but still it's not going to be over the top. So for highlights, I'm going to be using the Tom Ford Mood Light. I like mixing the two shades together. I think you get a really pretty soft glowy vibe. And there you go. Just right on top. So uh, Tom Ford on top. No, nothing on this side. Just makes your highlight a little bit more punchy, but still not overly metallic foundation on I feel like you can really see now with a full face um, how nice this foundation looks and how all of the powder products just blended out so perfectly there's no you know gapping um, it's not clinging to certain areas of my face more than others and everything just blended out so incredibly smooth and I just I really like how I don't have to feel like I need to put powder on top of the foundation to get everything to look you know nice and blended. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the shade. So mine is in the shade 16 and this is probably one of the only five foundations I've ever tried in my entire life that perfectly matches my skin tone as well as my undertone to where my face literally matches my neck undistinguishably like I really like how it mimics the undertones of my skin and it just it's a perfect shade match, truly. I can't emphasize that enough. Now, 16 is the shade that I would recommend for myself or anybody with a similar skin tone to me. It's definitely going to be your winter and early spring shade because come late spring, summer, and fall, it's probably going to be a shade that I need to go deeper in, uh, maybe two to four shades darker. You guys know I'm half Filipino. I wear sunscreen. I try to stay out of the sun just for, you know, the skin protective reasons, but um, inevitably my skin tone gets significantly deeper throughout the sunny months of the year. So I'm not a person who wears the same shade year round. I have to have um, drastically different shades depending on the season and my skin tone. So this is definitely something that I can wear for the coming months, but come summertime, I'm going to have to uh, get a shades deeper than this one. So um, just keep that in mind. But if you are a similar skin tone to what I'm at now, 16 would probably be a really safe bet for you. A really interesting feature about the foundation is the pump mechanism. It dispenses, uh, quite honestly, I would say a fourth of what a traditional foundation pump dispenses. So just for example, I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side pump, uh, one of the Lisa Eldridge and then one of the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, another one of my personal favorites. So here we have the two foundations, the Lisa Eldridge foundation and then Giorgio Armani. Now, Giorgio Armani is slightly more fluid, so it's going to spread a significant amount more than the Lisa Eldridge foundation, but honestly rude. I like hate when people do that. Stop revving your car. Okay, but as you can see, there's more fluid product in the Giorgio Armani side compared to the Lisa Eldridge one, because even when I start spreading this out, uh, you can tell that uh, there is less product than the Giorgio Armani. Perhaps not a feature that most people would care about or even think is that big of a deal, but um, I do like that because I think that uh, it makes me a little bit more mindful of how much product I'm using. So for example, for day to day where I want more of a no makeup makeup look, one pump will just evenly you know, tint my skin, give me a nice little bit of filter, but still provide me with really amazing coverage, especially to just even out my hyperpigmentation. And then if I want like a good amount of coverage, like today, I'll do one pump on each side of the face and then just a tiny bit more where I want to concentrate on hiding those pesky hyperpigmentation spots. And you know, today we did uh, two pumps 
for the entire face and I feel like although the skin is very flawless looking especially in person I mean you saw in the sunlight it still looks so natural and that's the thing that I really want to emphasize the most is that uh, you know even using two full pumps of the foundation your skin looks so good in person it is one of those foundations where you really hit the lucky spot and that foundation is not only something that looks beautiful in photos and you know in on camera but it looks really beautiful in person that's the main thing i want to emphasize um, from a lisa eldridge complexion product i'm sure that's what you'd be expecting but it really does deliver in the you know setting of looking good in person which is what everybody wants but you know there are some foundations that really just photograph beautifully and they give you that really nice flawless look but then when you see yourself in the sunlight or in person you know in the mirror uh you just kind of look a little bit too made up which i just I don't like that look. Um, I'm not really down for a full flawless look. I still want you to be able to look at me and feel like you can see skin. So I really like that about this foundation. The foundation in my collection, which I found to be the most comparable to the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin is the NARS Soft Matte. NARS Soft Matte is a lot more of a thick, dry, kind of like creamy formula though but it does set down to that satin matte finish although i will say the nars one tends to have a little bit more of a cling to dry patches but it's something i can easily work around whereas the lisa eldridge one doesn't cling to dry patches and the formula of the foundation is a lot more silky and a lot more smooth and it takes minimal effort to blend out whereas with the nars one i do have to work it up a little bit more now i'm not saying that they're dupes or you know that they're trade outs i just want to help you kind of visualize what this product feels the most comparable to in terms of something that I have in my collection um, and as far as I know the Lisa Eldridge one is only available online so um, if you are familiar with soft matte the Lisa Eldridge one is just a little bit more lightweight a little bit more silky um, and blends out a lot easier one of the biggest things about this foundation is it feels incredibly lightweight. Uh, I oftentimes forgot that I even had foundation on. So it does not feel like anything. Obviously I can feel that I have makeup on, I'm aware of it, um, but it just feels so beautiful and lightweight throughout the day. I don't get distracted by the way my skin feels. And I will say that it does tend to get a little bit more oily throughout the day, but that's something you can easily fix by just powdering or using an oil blotting sheet. Getting a little bit more oily throughout the day is something I notice with all foundations I wear. So not just the Lisa Eldridge one, um, any foundation throughout the day, I notice they get progressively more dewy. Now, one of the things that's really nice about this is you don't have to set it. I think if you have a normal to dry skin type, you do not need a setting powder. If you're oily, perhaps you'll want um, a setting powder just to keep the foundation in place for as long as possible, but definitely not necessary because it sets down to that satin finish. It's pretty much self-setting, which is really nice. One thing I don't like about that is the powdery finish can sometimes migrate in my under eye area and I notice that um, the folds of my eyes inevitably product always you know migrates there throughout the day so I'm constantly just kind of patting um, that little crease under my eyes. I like something that's a little bit more sticky and dewy because I find that they just tend to stay under my eye a lot better throughout the day versus things that are you know more dry and powdery and moves around under my eyes. Um, if you have you know a pretty you know normal under eye type it's not dry or you don't have a crease under your eyes this i think would pair really well as a concealer because you could see when i did the demo shots it really hides hyperpigmentation and darkness and redness and i could see it being a one and done for certain people especially if you don't crave like a brightened under eye look from concealer if you like just kind of a one and done look and you don't want that you know brightness in the center of your face you could totally skip out on concealer and just uh, build this up to your desired amount of coverage. Longevity wise for me, 10 plus hours of wear, easily 12 plus, and I don't say that as an exaggeration at all. Um, I have a drier skin type, so products don't tend to break down quite as quickly on me, and 
thus foundations just tend to be a lot longer lasting on me in general um, especially if i wear two full pumps i can get all day wear no touch-ups needed if i only wear one pump it's probably going to be four to six hours max before i feel like i need a touch up but two pumps easily i can coast through an entire day morning till night I'll be wait, washing off my makeup at night and I'm like, it still looks so good. Like I've done that multiple times where uh, I've been taking my makeup off really late at night and I've seen the foundation. I've been like, how does it still look so nice? So uh, longevity for a normal to dry skin type, it's up there and you don't even have to use primer if you don't want to. I like using primer sometimes, but uh, definitely not necessary. The foundation's got good longevity for my skin type personally. So longevity formula, those were the main things I really wanted to speak about. Uh, the other thing I wanted to touch on is if you have a foundation that you're already in love with, this isn't me saying that you need this foundation, but I do think that this foundation can fit the bill for a lot of people uh, who don't want to wear a lot of foundation or want a foundation that feels a lot more lightweight on the skin or someone who has a lot of texture on their face and really wants a foundation that's not going to emphasize the texture. I feel like that's a point I'm touching on a lot in this video, but it's the truth. I really do think that this foundation just looks exceptional in person. I can't say that enough. So um, overall, a new favorite of mine personally, and I've just been impressed with it and the way it's performed for me throughout the past few weeks and definitely something that I'm going to be including in more videos and tutorials. The other product I really wanted to touch on is the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Glow. Subtle, wait, no, Seamless Skin Elevated Glow. And mine is in the shade Cosmic Rose. I will say that I feel like this is a very everyday friendly version of Glossier Future Dew. It's got that high reflective shine and soft illuminated glow that Future Dew has, but it's much more subtle and it's not oily. This actually does set down to more of a soft gel finish on the skin. It's not sticky, it's not tacky, even if you don't put powder on top of it. Once it settles down, it doesn't feel distracting. Keep in mind, if you you know use more of it, it's going to be sticky and tacky to the touch but if you apply the right amount just you know one of the doe foot applicators it's not going to get sticky on the skin and it really does give you that soft reflective shine that you want just on the high points of the face without making you look greasy the great thing about liquid illuminators like this is they are much more versatile than powder highlights so you can use them in a bunch of different ways. You can wear them on their own, you can wear them underneath foundation, you can wear them mixed in with your foundation, you can wear it on top of your foundation, or you can wear it, uh, well I said on your own, but another really nice way to do it is just mix it in with your moisturizer or your sunscreen for the day and you get that really soft filtered glow on the skin. So it's really beautiful. There's no apparent shimmer in it. Now, what I mean by that is obviously there is a luminous pearl to this product because that's how you get that reflectiveness, but it doesn't have any like exaggerated bits of shimmer to it. And you can see I really just blended it out on the back of my hand. It gives you that really beautiful, uniform, soft glow. And I know you wouldn't be able to tell, but my hands are not sticking to the product it doesn't feel sticky if anything it just kind of feels really nice and moisturizing and it's almost like this product gets absorbed into your skin somewhat similar to a serum does but you're still left with that little bit of now there's one going in the opposite direction <laughs> i don't even remember what i was saying oh um so it gets um almost like absorbed into your skin somewhat similar to a uh, serum because when it sets down you don't feel it as a parent so it's not balmy but it looks balmy that's really the unique thing about it looks balmy but it doesn't feel balmy so i really hope that you found this helpful and informative um if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments down below if there are any other in-depth launches that are new that you really want to see a video on please be sure to let me know and i'm going to list and link everything i use in this video down in the description box but other than that i think that's everything we wanted to hit in this review and i'd love it so much if you would subscribe to my channel if you'd come follow me on instagram that would be amazing as well and i'll see you in my next video thank you so much for watching this one
Bye, everyone.